Gary, please, share the floor. Thank you, Raul. Yes. Uh, and thank you uh, very much for the initiative of organizing this and an excellent presentation. And uh, the PowerPoint, which I think everybody can download, save from the site, we'll also host it on the WASH site so it's readily available. And Yuri, also uh, to you for your uh, contribution and uh, initiative on this. Uh, I've been listening with great interest and trying to think about this. I don't expect to answer all the questions uh, during our seminar, but if anyone has a response, I would welcome. But I'd at least like to uh, raise some points that suggest to me that this initiative you've taken and the topic itself uh, has enormous practical potential and theoretical potential in our understanding of social sciences. Uh, one question, and I really don't know how this fits in with the concepts of complexity. Anyone who hasn't read the OEC document that Raoul lists in the references, I'd recommend it. It's really an excellent uh, introduction and overview. Mm -hmm. But one of my questions is about uh, the concept of opposition in complex systems. Uh, and by opposition or competition, as we, uh, we speak about in social science or in biology, uh, we see uh, how democracy functions. And we know that one of the founding principles of democracy is there's a certain tension and competition with different interests that results in uh, an emergent property that is not necessarily the intention of any of the contending parties. The uh, emergent property is greater tolerance or uh, uh, freedom uh, than anyone would perhaps give if they had full authority. We see in capitalism uh, the same principle of contending forces, not organized contending forces necessarily, individual contending forces, uh, who, which organize into subsystems or uh, organizations. But yet, through this competition, uh, the capitalist system, for all its uh, inequities and uh, inefficiencies, also creates as an emergent property a greater, releases a greater energy, uh, releases a greater innovation and creativity than we have seen in, in systems which eliminate the opposition through central planning. So as the concepts I'm wondering, this is one question just to illustrate, I'm wondering uh, what complexity science may teach us about that. A second point. Uh, regarding uh, uh, nonlinearity, I was thinking as you presented uh, some interesting examples, and again, I'm more of questions than uh, uh, answers here, but they're interesting questions to me. Uh, if you look at the, you mentioned, Raul, the population explosion, uh, a, a simplistic way of describing it, maybe overly simplistic, but still there's a lot of truth in it. Uh, you drop uh, modern vaccines into an uneducated, backward society, and the result is a population explosion which nobody anticipated. Uh, because all other variables tending to operate the same. I did a calculation in India that between 1950 and 1980, about 80 million lives were saved primarily due to the introduction of, uh, of modern medical uh, technology. So I'm wondering, obviously, if in the measure this is true, it is an oversimplification, uh, what uh, that should tell us about the impact of sudden uh, changes, which appear to be very microscopic, uh, appear to be limited to one sphere, but can have on an entire social system. Uh, another example in the other direction uh, is the Green Revolution, 
uh, in the mid-60s at a time when FAO estimated that about 10 million Indians would starve uh, in the, during uh, two years of severe drought. Uh, the government introduced something that was certainly unpredictable from past uh, traces and unprecedented. They introduced a massive program of, uh, for green revolution. The result was 100% a doubling of food production in a 10-year period. And if you look at the, the graphs of the past when food production was growing at 2% a year, a doubling in 10 years was something quite remarkable. In the political sphere, we have 1989 and the fall of the Berlin Wall. And I think it's, it's safe to say that very few of us uh, could have charted out or predicted the outcome in advance. So in a, a num in, a, in a number of these fields, I think complexity theory raises some very interesting questions, uh, which uh, are, are, would be interesting to pursue. A third area, which is one which the Academy has been exploring for the last one year, one of our projects, is individuality. In a paper that Sin and I did for Cadmus, uh, we gave the example of Rosa Parks, uh, a 40-some-year-old uh, black woman in Montgomery, Alabama, who refused to stand up and get to the back of the bus. And this precipitated uh, uh, a strike of all the blacks and an organization. It really was one of the, the catalysts for the whole civil rights movement uh, in 56, I think it was. Uh, so the individual, the role of the individual, the significance of the individual as a catalyst in a complex system, and the fact that we do see in history that an individual seems to be capable under certain circumstances of having a disproportionate and quite remarkable and unprecedented impact on the, the, the system as a whole. Uh, I, I wrote an article for the last issue of Cadmus on Steve Jobs uh, and, and looking at the contribution of Steve Jobs to uh, the to the growth of modern business, certainly he would, uh, uh, and there are so many others in, in different fields. So this is a third area that I think your uh, initiative is, is very welcome because it enriches our thought processes. Another area, uh, Alberto and I have been talking about the possible work we might do, uh, and Evo, on and I was, I was listening to you realizing to some extent the whole approach that uh, I've been discussing with Alberto and uh, is one that really looks at society as a complex system. And in, I mean, today, if you talk to the policymakers and they talk about employment generation, they basically say, well, uh, we can... Uh, uh, we can have a macroeconomic stimulus program. Uh, we can try to reduce the interest rates. Uh, we can do some vocational training. Uh, and uh, there are a few uh, others as well. But if you look at it, if you look at the employment as one result of a very complex system, uh, which is the society, and you think of all the ways in which that, that system can be activated and stimulated, which would uh, speed up, uh, which would accelerate the generation of new jobs, uh, increasing the speed of decision making in government uh, is one obvious one. Increasing the speed of information flows about new opportunities, broadcasting success stories so that what happens in one place, instead of taking two years to spread, uh, spreads in two months. I'm just giving a few that, that come to my mind. So I think I'm just trying to show here's another area. It's a, an, an issue the Academy has been dealing with. And it would be interesting for us, theoretically, to see what insights we might get from complexity science about it. Another. Uh, 
thought I had uh, in our Alexandria workshop in uh, Geneva and in virtually all our meetings, Trieste. Uh, the theme of values is one that we keep coming back to, uh, whether we're talking about law and human rights or economy or the, the, uh, uh, the right to employment, the New Deal, uh, in, our, in all our discussions, it's saturated with values. And I'm wondering, in complexity theory, if we look at a social system, we see there are many variables, there are many interactions, but unlike a physical system, there are also many levels, I don't know how you would, planes of interaction. There's physical interaction, there's exchange of ideas, there's uh, exchange of emotions and social interactions and uh, transactions, but there's also, uh, uh, at a deeper level of causality, uh, some uh, deeper aspirations or values that are expressing through the interactions of the society. Maybe a good example would be, uh, well, the 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 revolution the hippies or free speech or a revolution of the 60s or 1989 and what spread through Eastern Europe or the Arab Spring uh, that uh, we just seen and I'm wondering what how complexity theory helps not only understand the complexity in terms of the number of players. Uh, and the, three, the different interactions, but also the levels of interactions, because in a physical system, there's presumably uh, a limited, but in a human system, uh, it shows everything from the physical act to the highest idea uh, and aspiration. So my last uh, comment would be, I think this is a fantastic initiative, and I think uh, uh, that social science, maybe even more than physical science, though certainly it will be very challenging, but maybe even more than physical science, uh, the, 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 con the concept of complexity is, is a much more real way of understanding uh, what happens in society. And therefore, I think uh, it's, it would be uh, it would be good for us in all our future meetings, not just yeah. as a special seminar, to see how we can look at each issue that we're addressing uh, from uh, the perspective of complexity science and what we can learn from it. Yeah. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, who, 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 wants, who wants to comment? Yeah. I, w I would like to comment, if, if I may. Yeah, uh, please. Sir, 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 uh, thank you very much indeed, Pepe. You have said, uh, uh, well, in a different wording, uh, what I mentioned uh, before, so that in, in social sciences and then if we deal with uh, humanity and all these processes, this is exactly the, the main problem, how to characterize all these interactional links and, and values you have mentioned, exactly what, what I agree, the values. Or really, it, it's so difficult to say something mathematically about values. That that's, that's something we have to understand. And you saw this very uh, uh, with nonlinearity, uh, telling that this is really important. I think that this is a, uh, it, it starts from mathematics, but the message to take home is that 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 it's it's it's. Uh, we live in, in a linear world. We are accustomed. We are intuitive about the, 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 the inputs and outputs. It, in nonlinear system, it doesn't work. This sort of in, intuition we have uh, a, 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 well, accustomed to, this does not work because of these complicated uh, links between the constituents. So that, that, that is something that one should understand not only that mathematically and then picking up the formulas and whatsoever, but also mentally and then in the mindset that it might be so complex that we have to think before we, we, we predict something that it could happen. No, it is much more complicated. Thanks. Yeah, well, maybe uh, to, to add to that, uh, I think your second point, uh, Gary, uh, about the behavior of societies and the questions you, you had around, 
But now we have seen now, or we see today, what's happening in Turkey. What has uh, happened a few months ago in the Middle East, in Egypt, by example, or even in, uh, in, in, Tur in Tunisia. So I, I, let me say I project or I imagine that with the help of complexity analysis, it, it would be possible or it is possible, so I don't know exactly, to, to analyze what is living in the society and which results then in, in the actions we see. So when, when, you, when you listen to the, the interpretations and, and read in, in, in the newspapers the interpretation of what's going on, these are all interpretations on a linear basis. Yeah, They see that that happens and there's a consequence. But that's not the truth. Uh, well, that, that is not wrong <laughs> to make that difference. But there is much more going on. And so uh, answering that to, 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 as a methodology, yeah, so uh, that this type of we, we have, what is now discovered in the last 20, 30 years, that that will help. Yeah. Now, there is one restriction we have to be absolutely conscious about and, uh, when looking even in uh, 89, the wall, the wall in Europe. So this... Uh, to, to a way uh, was predict, predictable or would be predictable with, with the method at condition to have relevant data available. And there, there uh, yeah, so I don't know how, how one can, can solve that in, in the, the political establishment or the societal movement, uh, how to, to, to manage or to identify the uh, the leading the leading parameters. I give an example, uh, which is on the reference, and uh, it's the one by Betancourt from La Salamos in Santa Fe. They made an analysis for your uh, American uh, cities to find the criteria of uh, let's say, the best cities. So I do not agree with, with all the parameters, but that's another matter. It is, it's about the methodology. So they have chosen a number of, uh, of parameters, uh, say with uh, the crime amount, the population density, the pollution, uh, the number of patents, and I do not agree with that, but anyway, that's also one of the parameters, etc. So they have chosen their parameters and then started to calculate, to model, to make a model, yeah. And so, and, and for different, for different larger cities in the U.S. Good. I leave the result for what it is. But there, this is almost an example where a, uh, a, a complexity model, methodology, science, is helping what otherwise would not be possible or only with, with uh, books of descriptions and, and losing reality. So uh, I, there, that has been done. So this is published. So... Uh, I think the, the others I said about Turkey and, and the Middle East, that having such uh, methods and, and data, which is, uh, so we would go further and, and even predictive, as was said in, 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 in the presentation. Yeah. So um, I think there is much more that can be done than we think. Now, you brought on psychological aspects in, in, in society. I don't know how to handle that. In the sense uh, that uh, how, how will you quantify that, and how serious is that? Then, in, in fact, uh, all, all their, the parameters uh, may be very superficial, as as, as we think. Uh, you, you you brought up the the, the, the argument of uh, or the example uh, better of Alabama uh, with a lady. Yes, of course. Okay, that's an individual. Uh, but what was living in the society at that at that moment, and was he then the the catalyst or just the expression of what is living, the, the expression of a complex uh, uh, element which was not seen neither by the leaders uh, on on the spot, nor the, neither on the state level, neither in Washington. Yeah, so at that time, eh? so. So this is this is delicate. I don't, I don't know. Maybe there are other comments on uh, on that. And um, 
well, the, 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 there was the first point I forgot you brought, but uh, so I think uh, in general uh, there is uh, even on, on the, 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 the bank system where, where there are data, if they are available, but there are data that, that one can, could, one can and one should do what is going to happen in the U.S., in, 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 uh, in, in the EU. So with these methods, now, we know all that. We know that the politicians are, their reasoning is the rule of three. These are very simple, linear approaches, analysis on which they base their decisions. Yeah? So, and that, that is, that is not sustainable. That is even, I would say, anti-democratic. Yeah? There is more knowledge that can be used for helping in decision making. Which and then offered by this year, but there's still a long way to go. So and there's still a lot of work to do. So for those who want to to get in the field, so they they won't be jobless by by the end of their lives. So anyway, so but the first point uh, somewhere I, I forgot it. But uh, well, that's my comment. If if there is someone one else, but maybe that Sasa, that that you repeat your first question. Now after this discussion, it, it maybe it will be clear uh, to to most of us. But is there someone who wants to, to add or give comment to what Gary is uh, brought in? Yeah, well, I, I just, I, I just really, there was nothing de deepening that I wanted to add. Really, I was just smitten by what Gary was saying because the the notion of the different and the complexity of the planes of interaction um, totally makes sense to me and resonate with me as well as the notion of individuality that, uh, yes, I agree with Raul that he says, I mean, this person emerges through a convergence of certain situations and conditions in a society, obviously, and then there's a buildup that leads to an emergence of a certain individuality, but that there is something that causes that twist, that tipping point within the person that gives it the courage, the integrity, a certain set of values with which they are brave up to uh, set up a model, to set up a precedent, to do something like that. And I will tie that to the question of politicians and bankers. Um, you know, we, we already know that they're not humans existing in isolation, and they know that. Um, there was a, a joke I mentioned recently, just I was joking about teenagers and politicians and about, about their drives, right? I mean, we, we smile because there's something that we recognize in it. Um, and I will maybe repeat myself because Gary might have heard this before, but, um, you know, they might be existing in a linear or operating, feel, feeling pressured or conditioned to operate within a linear system, and they become proponents of that system that they have to execute, bring about and execute certain types of decisions that are perceived as strong, as um, overpowering, as effective, as productive, as progressive, or so on and so forth. Those are all prescriptive measures of their actions. But you see, everything that we, they hold within themselves as people, even when they try to suppress it, the emotional life, for example, is about to erupt somewhere else. That's why they're ridden with so many uh, scandals, sexual can scandals, affairs, suffering for so many things. One example that I mentioned was a, a gentleman uh, who was a leader of a very powerful local bank in Montenegro who ridiculed me, I'll be really honest with you, ridiculed a couple, couple of my comments about the Montenegrin values that we can draw on. Mind you, there's a young Montenegrin woman reminding them about some traditional values in Montenegro, and which was ironic because I was the one that tried to escape that system, but then you don't throw the baby out with the water. And he commented bluntly uh, with one um, sharp statement, I am a banker and I am not an altruist. Bankers are managers of relationships, and he in that moment negated his own network of relationships as a father, as a son, as somebody's partner, as a communal member. They cannot exist in that, and in, in that kind of isolation or denial, that is denial. That's the kind of denial that Alberto was talking about, lack of perspective because of the limited tools of perspective, limited lens and denial with which we approach any world problem as well as personal problems. So, I mean, like Raul says, there's so much to be done, but it is doable, and it needs to be spoken in terms that are relatable 
on many planes of interaction. And I think one of the reasons this, the, the rise of the um, feminist speak or the rise of the speak of the woman's empowerment, even though I, mm -hmm. I have many critical points about that, I have. But uh, it is important because this uh, uh, affection, this affective notion about it, these multi-level and the depth of introspection and contemplation and nurturing and all those things, is the speak that needs to be brought back into the public sphere that is relevant to all of us, that is not uniquely feminine, but that needs to be brought about within us as well. And I think it's the way, uh, if nothing else, I think we in the World Academy have been role modeling big time that kind of interaction um, amongst ourselves to begin with. So a lot to be done, like Raul said, but it's doable, and it is relatable. Okay, thank you. Yes, Alberto. <laughs> Ah, no voice. Alberto. 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 You un un unmute your mic. Yes, please. Alberto. Ah. Well, uh, may, may I just add a couple of words because I have to leave yes, in, in, in five minutes. Uh, I have one commitment more. I think that this is a really a very good discussion, and and and, and these these uh, we have to really to write this uh, in a, not in a slice form, but but as, as you have presented all these sorts of ideas here, something which is uh, is certainly for people uh, maybe uh, known already, but we have to work a little bit more about these sort of you know notions. That, that to make it really understandable, exactly as it, uh, Alberto has said, and, and you yourself has, uh, you have mentioned, and 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 sorry, yeah, sir, yeah, and 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 this is something that that is is really important, and well, you know, that this sort of ideas that were here that about the the, the importance of non-interactive or biosemiotics and and about the. The, the 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 effects and and the case study. This is something that should be actually actually really really formalized uh, for us and then distributed to the larger public. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, is the Alberto around? Alberto. Now. Um, well, Mimina, thank you for, for the, the last comments. So we are uh, on the way of closing. And it crosses my mind a following question, which is related to European situation. Today, the thinking, the, the mindset of the people, what there is one and, and uh, uh, eventually to be applied to a, 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 a comp complexity analysis. What we see, I think, is a secularization of our of in Western Europe of society, and if if this observation, global observation, is correct, uh, then I I think it would be worthwhile to to start a research with this research group. What uh, what what are the, the motivations within the the different societies, the different cultures? The different backgrounds to to have this type of evolution, and if if then some of the elements properties are applicable, that there uh, uh, in in scenario types that that can be given the perspective of further secularization, it, which is then an, another type of society we, we we are building up, and correlated to that a number of values that are going to change, which we have inherited for so many centuries and have their origin in religious considerations. This would be, so, let's say, an overarching <laughs> way of, of uh, uh, I tried to, to give the picture again, uh, to to analyze what, what is really, if it's possible, it should be proven to be possible, that's the first question, but to try by the application to, to discover 
uh, some some of the elements uh, which are moving in our in, in our society, which uh, and then due to what uh, is it due to technology? Is it due to an economic system, a market uh, consideration, or stuff like that? So, but anyway, I I feel I think I feel that uh, the secularization is a process which is going on and, and is is irreversible, so to speak. It is a slow one, but it would be it. To me, very interesting to see. So, what what uh, what, what the projections could be, the predictability could be over over a longer time, over longer periods of uh, of of, uh, of our existence or of, of of history. But okay, that's uh, let's say uh, somewhat what uh, uh, free wheeling uh, brainstorming uh, to to these uh, societal considerations. Now, if I the, there are four minutes left, uh, if I may suggest that some of those who came came in with with uh, comments, so uh, it would be fine if we may ask that to send them uh, on, in, via email to to us, to me, or to to you or to both of us. So, as I said, uh, we have promised we promise uh, to to bring on paper what what we have said. And then a couple back to to Alberto. So the idea of bringing something uh, out for for educational purposes, let me say it that way, or youngsters and educational purpose. Okay, we should keep that in in mind and and see uh, if uh, if we have uh, if we can bring together the expertise to do that. So it, uh, it is clear that the text to you and myself will bring together is not suitable uh, for for that it will be too 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 complicated i i fear uh, or i'm sure so but that we that we look for for type of of resources uh, who can do that yeah who can do it good then uh bring a message to children to youngers is is not easy to bring a good message and a correct message Please, okay can i make one brief comment Oh, yes, of course. Here's, just to confirm this idea, there's a double pool and something that we want to look at the project that you just suggested in the question. There is an intense secularization of the Western Europe, but there is an intense re-spiritualization of the civic state. And that's something that is value-based and infused. For example, if you just look at any uh, social media, the amount of inspirational messages that are based from the influx of Hinduistic tradition, uh, scientific spirituality of, say, Nikola Tesla or somebody else. So we w it would be fascinating to look at the way this, this double pool is going for the secularization of the, of the state while also re in accordance to also what Gary was pointing to, the value-based sort of reintegrating those um, okay. the scientific spirituality. Right, fine, we take that up. So, Gary, your uh, a concluding well, word. I, well, yeah. I can only I can only repeat my uh, great thanks and appreciation to you and Yuri for taking this initiative as you did on networking. You've uh, given us something very rich and meaningful, and we have to pursue it. Uh, look forward to your articles and thanks, Mila, Sasha, uh, Alberto. Uh, uh, and all those gentlemen in the yeah. show for participating. And uh, I will look forward to the third session in the fall, Ralph. Okay, yes. Well, when we were to that, so it, it, it will de deal with uh, self organization and autoporosis and the most of a more philosophical uh, approach, biological, uh, biophilosophical, those two. And the inspiration uh, I picked up and I thought about it is what Fritz of Kappa published in a fantastic book, uh, The Web of Life. So, uh, so to, to give the flavor of, of the, the discussion, but it will be more philosophical than, than scientific. So, but anyway, somewhere, uh, fitting in the agenda uh, of, of Gary's uh, activities. <laughs> so thank you very much all.